William Ewart Gladstone, four times Prime Minister of Great Britain in the 19th century, a great religious figure and also a humanitarian. And this book that I'm holding is an illuminated gospel given by the, the Armenians of the Caucasus in 1895 to thank Gladstone for his commitment to the Armenian cause. When Gladstone died, this book was on his chest as he was lying in his study and people came to pay their respects. Then when he went to his state funeral in London, within his coffin there was an Armenian cross and his coffin, as it lay in state for three days in London, was covered not in a British flag as you'd expect for someone who'd been four times prime minister, but it was covered in Armenian colours. And this is quite extraordinary, I think, for very few prime ministers, only three, I think, in the whole history of Britain have had a state funeral. And usually they're very pompous, nationalistic events. But Gladstone had, went through the streets of London covered in these Armenian colours. And this, I think, shows the depth of feeling. I think it's a shared Christian feeling that he had with Armenia. But it is also, and I think this is important, a strong sense of sorrow for the troubles that the Armenian people were going through in the 19th century. Here we are in Gladstone's hometown of Harden in North Wales and in his home church. And one of the striking things in this church is the Armenian window that was uh, presented to Gladstone and presented to this church by an Armenian benefactor in 1897. And it's there above me. And it shows the two great figures of Armenian Christianity, St. Bartholomew, who brought Christianity to Armenia, and Gregory the Illuminator, responsible for the development, the expansion of Christianity in Armenia. And Gladstone really admired the Armenians because they were the first nation to accept Christianity as the state religion, and he admired their history, their martyrdom, because of the terrible atrocities that the Turks were inflicting upon them. I want to focus now on his religion, because in a way that's a clue to understanding him. Um, Gladstone was born in Liverpool in the United Kingdom um, in 1809. He was born to a very religious mother who was obsessed with the idea of sin. She was very strict. And this had a profound effect on young William. And he lived a lot of his life sort of haunted by this sense of sin and the need to do right. Indeed, he wanted to be a priest. But his father, who was a wealthy businessman, persuaded him instead to go into politics. And so William, paid for largely by his father, became a member of parliament, a young member of parliament. And he becomes consciously more open, more liberal, as he gets on, as he meets other people. He becomes very ecumenical in his support of all Christian denominations and of all religions. He says to his friend, I was brought up to hate and fear liberty. I came to love it, and that's the secret of my whole career. As a prime minister of Britain, he didn't have a foreign policy that was about the greatness of empire and expanding empire. On the contrary, he was the first person to decolonize and shed parts of the empire. Earlier in his political career, he had supported political prisoners in Italy. He had struggled to give justice and home rule to Ireland. He supported the Bulgarians. And then finally, it's the Armenians that meant probably the most to him, that sort of defined so much about his life. The phrase crimes against humanity originated with Gladstone and originated specifically when he was talking about Armenia. You could call Gladstone one of the founders of the modern human rights movement. And as we go through this great building project here at Gladstone's library, we want to build a forum and we want within that forum to have an exhibition that will focus on Gladstone and human rights, Gladstone and religion, Gladstone and democracy. And what is one of the few elements in those three stories, those three subject areas, is Armenia. That it is central to all three of those strands. That it's central to, to understanding today's world 
it's and the geopolitical concerns of today. And so we want to honor Gladstone. We want to do that by remembering Armenia, by celebrating Armenia, and by having in this country that does not yet recognize the Armenian genocide to have an area that is very firmly waving the Armenian flag.